I'm John. And I'm Meredith. And this is No Talking in the Library. Uh, we've been working in the library for weeks now edition. Uh, <laughs> just never gets old. Uh, cleaning off the computers and uh, looking at people through plexiglass. What do you think? I love wearing a mask. I wish we could do it all the time. Yeah, I've started wearing my mask at home. My wife thinks that's a little weird, but it's not even nearly the weirdest thing going on. So um, Today, I think we're going to talk about everyone's favorite subject, American politics. <laughs> oh, I love it. Wait, let me get my notes. No. Um, uh, I have just recently watched The American President, um, a film, 1995 film. Uh, it's on Hulu right now. I'm sure we have it here, um, which is not a movie I've ever seen. And I didn't realize that this was written by Aaron Sorkin and was sort of the, you know, proto lead into what eventually became the West Wing. Yeah, it's very much, uh, you can see the, we can talk about the connections between the two things in a minute here, but I remember really quite enjoying that movie. I'm really a sucker for anything Annette Bening wants to do. And um, uh, that's Michael Douglas, if I'm remembering correctly. Michael Douglas is uh, President Andrew Shepard, I believe. Right, a, a name drawn out of the uh, annals of the white bread names of presidents. Yeah, so what was your, what was your overall take on, on the American president? I really liked it. Um, I know that Aaron Sorkin's sort of, you know, cash of cred has sort of faded in the last, you know, decade or two since the West Wing was on the air, but you know, I really, I, I liked it. It's, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a movie about a, uh, a president who is not married. He's a widower. Um, his wife died before he ran for office. And uh, presidential trivia, there have only been two presidents to not be married uh, when they were elected. Do you know who they are? I don't. Uh, one I knew, one I... I didn't know. Uh, Buchanan was the one I did know. He was never married. And Cleveland, who was married uh, while in office. But anyway. Um, just, just, sorry. To, just to stop here for a moment. Isn't Cleveland yeah. the one whose favorite meal was possum and taters? That might have been Taft. No, that was I Taft, that, yeah. That was Taft, yeah. All right. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, President Andrew Shepard uh, meets a fiery, intelligent lobbyist, Annette Benning, and, you know, he wants to date her, and, you know, they, they start a relationship, but of course, it's an election year, so every, every move, every, every, you know, everything about the president is under a microscope, and all of his, his uh, staff, um, including, uh, Martin Sheen, who was eventually the president in the West Wing, a very like uptight, you know, high energy Michael J. Fox, Anna DeVere Smith, who I absolutely adore. And I will talk about how much I love her if we have the time, um, are just, you know, trying to deal with the fact that, you know, he wants to have a relationship, but, you know, his approval ratings are just you know, falling point by point every minute they, they check the numbers. So um, that is the film in and of itself. Yeah, I really, um, it, it was a sort of, I recall sort of when the West Wing got going, thinking that uh, there was a lot of similarities. At that time, I didn't, I think, think too much about the connection between who was writing what. Um, but you can tell, once you've been exposed to a lot of Aaron Sorkin, type dialogue that you, you can sort of see the connections between that and the American president, between the West Wing and the American president. He's one of those writers, uh, a lot like um, Amy Sherman Palladino, who wrote Gilmore Girls and The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, where like the cadence of their writing is such that you only have to be watching it for a couple of minutes before you're like, oh, I definitely know who wrote this. And, and Aaron Sorkin is exactly like that. And, and became more so, so that 
uh, the newsroom, which which about which maybe the less said the better, but which was a kind of knock on uh, project after the end of the West Wing. Um, I, I watched all of it, I will say, um, out of a sense of personal masochism, maybe, but um, but you could really tell that it was Aaron Sorkin because it was really uh, had that kind of staccato uh, give and take and sort of heavily moralizing. Let's just so the West Wing is a, is a kind of American phenomenon. It, it ran from uh, 1996 to 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 1999 to 2006. Nine, hmm, 99 to 2006. Okay, a little But anyway, um, so it, it it goes from the sort of end of the Clinton years uh, across 9/11 into the into the Bush second Bush administration, and. Um, it's one of those things, how to say this? It's a little bit, um, so Aaron Sorkin is a very conservative Democrat. Let's just be clear about, about that. And, um, but his, his stuff is watchable because he's very concerned about giving the due to the other side. So if you're a Republican, if you're someone who's conservative, you can watch the West Wing and not feel pandered to any more than anyone else, um, because Aaron Sorkin really wants to let you know, like, hey, the, the way government, American government works, or he, the way he believes it works, is that people who are uh, have legitimate uh, differences in perspective do their best to try and work them out and get the best result, you know, for people, for Americans. And um, uh, now, one of my friends, uh, somewhat less charitably described Aaron Sorkin productions as Aaron Sorkin arguing uh, with himself in sock puppets. Um, well, it's so, true. Like you were, how you're describing the the cadence of an Aaron Sorkin show, it is that sort of, the, the Aaron Sorkin walk and talk has become like almost a meme. I've seen parodied in, I think, 30 Rock. I think he was in an episode of 30 Rock. Right, I think he was. Um, and, but it's like, broken up by really like long speeches of like you know great men saying powerful things I think is another like hallmark of that I, I have I've only seen maybe a handful of episodes of the West Wing uh, most recently I watched the pilot and I'm not gonna like sit here and say that the West Wing is like not a good show it is a a very, very well-made show. And it, frankly, is one of the best pilots I've ever seen. But it's so optimistic right. that, like, <laughs> it's really hard to watch given the state of American politics right now because exactly what you said. It's, like, smart, you know, hard-working people who you know, sometimes have to make sacrifices of their their morals or their values, but you know, really they're just there to, to do good for the American people. You know, they, they want to do the best they can. And I just, I don't, can't buy it because it's just like, <laughs> that's just not, I don't think what's happening. Well, it's, it's a hard sell. And it's one of those things that was only even aspirational at the time. I mean, this is, this came out at the end of the Clinton administration when there's you know, Ken Starr and Monica Lewinsky and, uh, and then, you know, it goes across 9-11 and it addresses sort of how things changed uh, around that. Is 9-11 um, in the West Wing? It, uh, no, but something that's kind of like it is. Like it, um, okay. So, um, now the West Wing really benefited from an absolutely dynamite cast. It had uh, Martin Sheen, one of the absolutely great actors in, in modern American uh, film and television. Uh, I mean, anybody who's seen Apocalypse Now will know that he just is an absolutely stellar actor. And of course, his entire catalog of excellent uh, things. And he plays uh, uh, Jed Bartlett, the president who's his PhD in economics. So right here, like, okay, so the, the, the president like has expertise about something, um, which is something that apparently neither party really wants. And nobody likes. Um, but uh, it has just, I mean, the cast member, 
the cast members up and down. Allison Janney, this is the thing that really made her famous. She's an absolutely excellent actress and really brilliant as the press secretary, C.J. Craig. Just absolutely stunning. Uh, this was Rob Lowe's sort of comeback into real real life. Jimmy Smits is in it in the later seasons. Alan Alda is excellent as a Republican uh, <laughs> presidential candidate. And this is something, you know, um, Aaron Sorkin, the reason the show is successful is, I mean, partly it, 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 you know, it is a sort of kind of liberal view of what government should be like, but it does say like, look, conservatives are not, like you might disagree with them, but they authentically want good things. They just think that maybe some of those things are different or, or the ways of going about them are different. They're not like, you know, intrinsically, intrinsically bad. And in fact, like, and I, we have to say this not as a selling point, but it's a democratic administration the entire time. So like the Republicans are always in, in opposition. Um, but it's a really, it's a really good show. It, um, there are a lot of, it has flaws. I know a lot of people who watched it because they wish that American political culture on both sides of the spectrum was more like this. So, um, but a really entertaining show. I think it's, it's on Netflix and I think it probably will be until the sun explodes. So, uh, you know, definitely something that's easy to check out if you have a, a Netflix subscription. And now, of course, the DVDs here if you want to watch it. Sorry. <laughs> now, in my opinion, if the West Wing is aspirational how we all wish you know government really was if you want to see a show about how i'm pretty sure government is check out veep oh yeah oh yes that's a show of a group of completely incompetent politicians and staffers getting nothing done and just circling around until you're exactly where we started or sometimes worse off. Yeah, Veep is, um, it's, it's, it's notable for a number of reasons. Number one, number one I think, uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, uh, famous in everyone's mind because of uh, Elaine Bennis and Seinfeld, then did The New Adventures of Old Christine, which I didn't like as much. There was a lot of funny stuff in it. Clark Gregg is in it, uh, and he's really funny, and Wanda Sykes is just absolutely killing. Um, but I just, she had that same problem that everybody else who was on Seinfeld was, which was that she had created a kind of iconic character and it was really hard to see her as anything else. Um, and then and she- with her, her, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say her embodiment of the character of Vice President Selena Meyer is transcendent. It is a performance. I mean, I really find that the same people winning Emmys every year is like really irritating, but like she deserved it because the level of like manic energy that she had to be at <laughs> at all times is really impressive. Yeah, it's, it's a really brilliant show. She's just absolutely, I mean, just established herself as, as one of the truly great comedic actresses actresses, actors that that American culture has ever produced. I mean, just just absolutely killingly funny. They have a great cast in that in that show. Uh, uh, Tony Stato. Hale, Anna Chlumsky, Matt Walsh. Yeah. Um, Gary Cole. Timothy Simmons. Timothy Simmons yeah. as Jonah Ryan is one of the most horribly entertaining characters in the entire world. Anna Chlumsky is, is is my favorite young comedic actor in the sense that um, she's always has these sort of facial expressions of like barely contained psychosis. You know, when she's heard something, like there's that whole, I forget, I think it's maybe season four where she's constantly being told in sort of various situations that she's shrill. And every time it happens, you can see her eyeballs nearly pop out uh, because she's so enraged at having that said to her. And it's just, it's just absolutely brilliant. I mean, she's, she's not only great in the way that she delivers her lines, but her facial expressions and her sort of conduct is, is just so perfect, so unbelievably hilarious that, yeah, that show, I, I have laughed in episodes of that show until I really hurt myself. Yeah, and 
it was a show it was on what seven seasons and, oh, yeah. and it, it's a show that has some ups and downs um but it has a finale that is so like bold you know most of the times finales are like let's see all the characters and let's you know all have a hug and let's end in a place that like is nice for everyone to go you know off into the sunset with or they're just terrible like how i met your mother no i will never let that go thank you for asking fair enough that's that's the, the, the finale of how i met your mother is one of the most is the most I, I think let's just let's just go it's the greatest of all time it's the goat in terms of being the absolute worst finale i think that finale destroyed the careers of the creators of that show I don't yeah, think I, they got a single job or pitched a single thing since then. I believe it. It's like that, you know, we, we've talked about this, the, the novel Ready Player One, uh, the book that the, the author put out next was so bad that it made you go back and think like, wow, was that, was I wrong about the earlier bad, book? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, the finale of Veep is so like mind blowing because of just how like, horrible and mean it is but it just in a way that just fits with the tone of the show it just pulls no punches you know selena meyer has become this like awful nightmare of a person and just will literally do whatever it takes like crosses a line you don't think she would ever cross right and it's just like when you see it unfolding you're just right. like, I can't believe this is happening right now. Like, I, I can't believe you could, I could be as surprised in a finale like that, beyond, like, killing everyone, you know. Right. I mean, it, it, she doesn't just sidle across that line. She gallops across it, and it's like, looking back at it, the rearview mirror, like, it's, you know, it's, it's in a way, it made me think of, okay, so this, the, the Seinfeld finale for people who saw it is, is really problematic. I'm, I'm just going to say what happens, because everybody should know by now, but um, the Seinfeld finale is a double episode, um, and it's really a clip show, and I think it was Jerry Seinfeld just being a jerk to everybody, but at the end of it, like, so they get arrested in a small town, and, like, practically every character from the earlier seasons of the show shows up to testify about what terrible people they are, which is kind of the point of the show, Seinfeld, like, it's really... One of the things I like about Seinfeld is that there's just no redeeming features for people at all. And um, at the end of it, they're just in jail. Like the, the closing shot is like them in jail and that's it. Um, and um, so I like this for that reason, for that same reason. That is to say, they didn't turn it into some sort of, it wasn't like Frasier where they all get married and head off in an RV or something like that. It was like... Um, Children of the Corn. I mean, it was just crazy, like how you you're watching. You're like, wow, is this really? I mean, because you know, the 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 last season of Veep is pretty close to the bone in terms of uh, the way American politics is rendered. I mean, it's really yeah. Right. Well, that's the thing. Like the one of the reasons. So this show, much like The West Wing, was a sort of a continuation of a series by Armando Iannucci. I have not seen the thick of it. But yeah, I've only I've seen some of it, but I haven't seen all of it by any by any stretch. Um, but I think I read him saying like they had to finally end Veep because there was nothing left to parody because so like the things that they had you know made up the hyper real like oh this would never happen in seasons one through four were like happening during the current administration. There was a, a gap in the production because I think Julia Louis-Dreyfus had to go under cancer treatments, I yeah. believe. So there was a, a little bit of a gap between the last season and they just had to end it because it was just like, there's literally nothing else to parody. It is, reality has become a parody of itself. Right, yeah, like reality and Veep approached each other asymptotically <laughs> and, then, and then joined. Yeah. Um, but that's you know it's it's a it's an absolutely brilliant show. There's a there's a there's a scene. Now okay, we can't really quote anything that's in Veep. <laughs> and let's just be clear about what sorts of 
There's very salty language being used a lot of the time in Veep. And some, some of the most creative curses I think I've ever heard on television. I have to say, there's like, if you look on YouTube, you can find reels of insults from Veep. And you could just spend, you know, hours watching those. They're so extensive and so awesome. Um, but there's a scene in which uh, they all get called up in front of a congressional committee. Uh, and it's, it's sort of like the last third of, of a, I think it's the finale episode, and I don't remember which season, but, um, it, but it's literally one of the funniest things I've ever, ever seen on television. I mean, it made me laugh so hard that I thought I was gonna injure myself. Like, it's, because it's so perfect. Like, the, the way the sort of like, petty fogging goes on and the sort of like, like obnoxious sort of, sort of like, mutual play acting spectacle of the of the congressmen who are who are questioning them and i mean it's just uh, it's just so perfect but you're right it finally just got to the point that 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 uh it, there was sort of a, an apotheosis at which point it became the real world and they just had to stop there well this has been a a a, a, a merry romp through uh, representations of american politics in uh, film and media yeah, I, I I feel like maybe I should watch The West Wing. Uh, you, I, I want you to watch The West Wing because I really, I, I, I want, there's so many things I want to talk about in it with you because there's so much stuff where, like, you'll want to, you'll want to, like, tear your hair out, but it's also kind of entertaining. I, it's really, it's shocking I haven't seen it. I went to American University, which is, like, the peak of, of the, the hub of, you know, young political activists, you know, the School of um, Public Affairs, I think, you know, tons of people interning um, on the Hill. Like, this show was, I think, just ending during my freshman year. And, like, Martin Sheen was, like, the people's president. He, I think he spoke uh, near campus at one point, and everyone wanted to see him, like, you know, it's surprising I haven't seen this. Right, although, I mean, I'll just, to, to, to finish up, I will say, for those of you of a more sort of conservative political cast, uh, you know, do watch Aaron Sorkin's The Newsroom. It's roughly the same kind of thing, except it focuses on The Newsroom. Uh, and the, the main anchor is an unapologetic Republican. And it's the same thing kind of in reverse image, you know, uh, uh, he is very sort of open about his politics and, and Aaron Sorkin is, is basically trying to say like, look, on the, on the Republican side of the political spectrum, there are people who like authentically care about the country and really have some good ideas about, you know, they're not just out there, you know, it's not just demonizing one side or demonizing the other. It's trying to show the sort of complexity of, of, of politics and political arguments. So, um, and it's once again, if you like that kind of, that kind of like uh, patter that that Aaron Sorkin shows are, are full of, and a lot of people do. I mean, uh, West Wing was a massively successful show. Uh, and for uh, Veep, they never say which, you know, political one side or the other. It's just everyone's terrible. <laughs> Right, yeah, that, that's the great thing about like it. Both sides, it's basically saying both sides are the exact same. Is basically, I think, the long and the short of that. Right, there's, there's very little idealism that you can associate with Veep. And every time someone comes, some of it comes up, gets beaten down with a baseball bat. Um, all right, well, I think that's about enough from us for this time. We'll be back next week with uh, more stuff. All right, we'll see you later. All right. <laughs>